It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brainer Sports Talk. In today's episode, I look privileged of interviewing the Buffalo State's head acrobats and tumbling coach, Coach Allie Stark. How are you doing today? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get started in coaching in college acrobats and tumbling? Yeah, I um, actually competed in it for four years at Alderson Broadus University. Um, from there, I kind of fell in love with the sport. And I didn't really see myself doing anything else, if that makes sense. Um, so by the time my senior year rolled around, I was going to go into student teaching. I was an elementary education major. And um, I realized that I, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, so I quickly changed my major to political science, just knowing that I was going to go into coaching um, just because I loved the sport and was so passionate about it. What was that experience like going to Adrian Broadus? and getting to compete in acrobats and tumbling? Yeah, it was very unique. Um, I moved from Nevada to West Virginia. Um, so I was obviously 2,000 miles away from my family, away from everything that I knew. And then acrobatics and tumbling, it was a brand new sport at the time. Um, there, when I first started competing, there was only, I think, seven schools that had the sport. Um, so what we were still really grassroots. So not only had I not, you know, been to West Virginia, I didn't go visit. I just packed my bags and knew that it was the best choice for me. Um, but I also hadn't ever competed in the sport before. I came from a power tumbling background that transitioned into acrobatics and tumbling. So I still had a brand new sport to learn, um, you know, being on a team at that time of 20 women, all of that. It was a big learning experience my freshman year. And after that, um, it was uh, honestly so much fun. So uh we had a great team as far as, you know, skills goes, um, culture wise, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, I am very thankful for all of my former teammates. And um, it was definitely a great experience. How was that feeling like the first time you got to put on that leotard for them and represent that school? Yeah. So putting on the uniform, it was very unique because it's um, I came from a athletic background that it was very individually based. So you competed, you know, for your own scores. You didn't compete for a team. So being able to compete and represent a university was, um, you know, definitely a life-changing experience. And you gain a lot of pride, not only, you know, in yourself, but in your team and in your school. So it was definitely um, very prideful. While as a college athlete, what were some of your biggest accomplishments? Yeah, um, my sophomore, junior, and senior year, I was named to the All-American team. Um, so at that time, I believe it was the eight top eight athletes um, from all divisions in our sport were named to the team. Um, and then my sophomore year, we won a seven element acro champion for the event, individual event. And then my junior year, I won, well, we won the open toss as well. Um, so I was both in both of those events as a top. Um, so it definitely was a really fun career for me. What was that experience like competing for national championships? Yeah, it's honestly, again, it's representing your university at the highest level. There's not a lot else that can compare to it. Um, you know, representing your team, um, all of your teammates being there and rallying behind you um, in those group events is really unique. And that's where our sport is really cool is we have those, not only do we have a team championship, but then you have individual national champions as well. So you have those individual events that you can compete. So while your team might not make it to the top two, you can still compete for that national championship at, you know, that those like individual events, um, kind of like how track and field is with that. So it definitely, um, it gives you a little bit more to compete for, which is really cool. As an athlete, what was that experience like being a part of that inaugural team? It was a lot of fun. Um, it is something that, you know, now that I am coaching an inaugural team and built a program here, um, I'm really thankful for our coaches and our administration at Alderson Broadus for giving 
us what they did um, and setting the, you know, setting the tone for what was to come. And I think that was the most unique part was not only being part of the inaugural team, but then watching, you know, and being on the team for four years and seeing how much we grew from that moment, um, all the things that we accomplished, whereas, you know, our first year, I don't think we could have imagined getting to where we got to. Um, so it was, you know, very fun to be a part of a first year team where you really don't have anything to lose. Um, you know, it's you're learning every single day and you're going out on the mat and just, you know, hoping that you know what you're doing. Whereas after that, you have everything down and it's so much easier and it's fun to see the growth. Coming out of college, what was it like getting into coaching and becoming an assistant coach at Grand Granville College University? Yeah, so I um worked for Coach Jackie Eshelman um, for my first assistant coaching position, and she actually was my coach for four years at Alderson Broadus University. So it was actually a really easy transition because of her. Um, she, I kind of knew her coaching style, her coaching philosophy you know, where I could really fill in and help and then where I really didn't need to fill in because she had some that stuff down. Um, so it was so really easy for me to kind of just pick up where she needed me and I could, we could read each other's brains, especially by that fourth year that we worked together. Um, we worked really well together, but especially that first year, she helped me a lot, but I think my four years before that helped too, because I just knew what we needed um, with her taking over the program at Gannon and then, you know, knowing her coaching philosophy and all of that. What was that like being a part of Coach Jackie's program and coaching staff at Gamian? Yeah, she's an incredible coach. She's obviously worked her way up to the Division One level, but she's also done a lot of growth um, for our organization with the NCATA. So it's super inspiring to see, you know, everything that she's done. And that's something where she just always inspired me to do those things as well and to be super active within the organization and, you know, grow what we can grow and support who we can support so that the sport can be successful. Um, so she was a big inspiration with all of that. And then, um, you know, she does a really good job establishing a team culture and building a really strong foundation or a really strong team that we're all, they may not have all the resources that everybody, you know, top four does, you're still going to be top four and you're still going to make your way there because she is so good at establishing that culture and that belief. Um, so that's a lot of what I took away from her. Going from Gannon, what was that experience like leaving Gannon to go to Baylor? Yeah, it was actually a really tough transition only because I knew I was going to miss the athletes and then obviously Jackie and all the relationships that I had built there, you know, having been there for four years, having been the recruiting coordinator, um, I had really good relationships with the team. So it was really difficult actually to, you know, leave them and to let go of, you know, what my world was like there and to take on a new world and, you know, get outside of my comfort zone a little bit. But once I did that, you know, it's an experience that I'm very thankful that I did. While at Baylor, what were some of your biggest accomplishments as this assistant coach? Yeah. Um, so at Baylor University that year, we won the team national championship for the NCATA. We went, I believe we went 11 and 0, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, we were undefeated that season throughout the entire season. Um, we had multiple All-American honors as well as um, I believe we had the athlete of the year and oh, did we have specialists? I, we might have, I think we had specialists and athlete of the year for the NCATA as well. Um, and so it's just a really unique opportunity to compete truly at the highest level in one sport. And that's what working at Baylor University for acrobatics and tumbling is. As a coach, what was that like getting to compete for a national championship as a coach? Yeah, it um was honestly something that I had never experienced before in the sense that I didn't know what to expect. And it was really awesome um it was a lot of fun and at that point you know I think it was the only meet that I was a little bit nervous for because I felt you know like the stakes truly were there I'm usually not a nervous coach and I was nervous because I was like oh this is it like I wanted it for the team so bad but they're also a team they they were gonna do whatever they had to to win they're a very consistent team competing that year obviously being undefeated um so it was a little nerve-wracking but it was a lot of fun to see them um, 
again, compete one of their best meets. And after three days straight, you know, you're exhausted. It's pretty exhilarating, but it's a lot of fun to watch them um, have joy in the moment of winning that national championship. What was that historical season like going to be national championship and having an undefeated season? Yeah, it was, um, you know, Coach Felicia Mulkey, she's the head coach at Baylor University. Um, she has actually won every single acrobatics and tumbling national championship up to the state, whether she was at the University of Oregon or at Baylor University. So she is obviously an incredible coach. I don't have to say that. Um, and learning from her and then her staff and then her team that she's built for so long at Baylor um, they taught me a lot and that's what, you know, taking the job, I, that was my biggest goal, um, was to learn everything that I could from them and then contribute where they needed me to contribute, um, and kind of figure out, you know, where, what my role was, you know, how my personality would fit in all of that kind of stuff. And it took a little bit, but once it did, you know, I felt super comfortable and we took off running. Um, so co coaching under coach fee, um, is a really unique experience, and it was one that really set the tone, um, I think, for my career in general. What were some of the things that you learned throughout your coaching stop to then help you to become a head coach for the first time? Yeah, so I think the biggest thing with, um, you know, being a coach is, you know, it's not so much the X's and O's. It's a lot of people think that's that's the part that's so cool and it's so fun. But unfortunately, coaching isn't just the X's and O's. It's not just the skills. A lot of it is how to create a culture and a foundation and, you know, keep the team on track, keep the team competing, keep them wanting to excel to the highest level. And so I think that's where Coach Fee, especially, she helped me understand how to inspire them and how to keep you know, our team developing throughout the year. So being a head coach, making sure that, you know, we're not just talking about in September coming together and becoming a team and team bonding. I'm talking about, you know, what it looks like in April when we're going to the Division Three National Championship, um, what it looks like in January when we come back from winter break, all of those sorts of things, just really having a wrap on um, what the team's needs are, what the team foundationally needs, and then culturally, you know, what we can do to come together to be the best team. And then knowing that the next year, it's going to be a very different team. Um, and you're gonna have to do it all over again. It's not, you know, one size fits all. So I think that was one, um, a big takeaway from coaching under her for, you know, establishing my head coaching career. Coming to Buffalo State, what was that experience like becoming a head coach for the first time in your coaching career? It was really exciting. It's something that I knew, you know, I was bound to do eventually. Um, after five years of being an assistant coach, I was pretty ready just to take that step and to build, you know, another program under this incredible sport. And I think that's what I was most excited for was to share this opportunity with the Buffalo and Western New York area, because we were the first team in Western New York to add. And we were actually the first team in the state of New York to add. Um, so it's a really cool athletic experience that I was excited to bring to the community. Um, and so I think that's what I was really most excited for. And then after that, you know, it's really been next, we'll be setting the foundation and seeing what we can do this first year. What has that been like as a head coach, bringing a new program to Buffalo State and having an inaugural season? Yeah, so obviously last year, I spent the entire year recruiting and getting a team a roster, um, you know, that we can compete with. And this year, you know, this fall we have um, at Division Three, we have 24 days to practice and to get them together and to figure it out, which is a little bit different than Division One and Division Two. So that definitely was a big adjustment for me. Um, but seeing how excited they got once they learned, you know, the skill sets and kind of what we would be looking at and where they'd be excelling, seeing their excitement for the sport and seeing them, you know, have those moments of like pure joy because they love it so much and they're supported by the university, they're supported within the athletics department. Um, that's been like the most fun part for me is seeing that. And that's what we need to continue through and have a really strong first year. Um, you know, our first year isn't about the skills. It's not about, you know, what our record's going to be. You know, a first year program really is about what you can establish and found like 
you know, establish a foundation so that year two and year three and year four and beyond, it's really easy to continue to build and get better versus, you know, maybe not focusing on the right things year one and then getting stuck in year two and getting stuck in year three, you know, and having to rebuild again. So making sure that everything's streamlined so that going forward, we can just be, you know, better and stronger and, you know, a better team moving forward. As a head coach, what has it been like building that coaching staff around you and the players around you? Yeah, so recruiting last year was a lot of fun because, you know, there's a lot of athletes on our team that are local. So they, I had, you know, more time to develop a relationship with them. And then we do have athletes that are, you know, out of state as well. So we have, you know, a couple that are a plane flight away, um, whether they're from California, Maryland, New Jersey, um, we have an athlete from Mexico. So it's been really cool bringing together just a big, you know, mesh of athletes from, you know, wherever they're from and bringing in their different cultures. And that's something that we talk about a lot is, you know, we're not all the same. We were not all raised the same. Um, we're not all the same people. That's not fun. What's fun is bringing a bunch of, you know, really unique people together and learning about each other and becoming a team like that. Um, so recruiting that roster, you know, it was really important to me to get at, or to find athletes that were going to be, you know, on the boat with that and that weren't going to um, expect their teammates to be the same as them or need to be the same as them. Um, so I think that was really important to me. And, you know, we definitely did a good job of establishing that foundation and bringing in the right athletes. And then from there with my staff, um, I have coach Melanie Golding. She was a head coach previously at Glenville State within the sport. Um, and she's from Buffalo, moved back to Buffalo a couple of years ago. So having her already have been head coach was a, you know, a big win for me. Plus she was my teammate at Alderson Broadus. So we have a good relationship. Um, so she has a lot of strong, um, you know, coaching background, as well as some strong personality traits that maybe I don't have. So it's good because we kind of balance each other out and she'll, she can handle the stuff that maybe I'm not ready to handle. Um, and that's more so like mentally, um, she can help me, you know, process everything that's happening. And then with coach Bree, um, Blazik, she's from Buffalo, New York, and she was an athlete of mine at Gannon university for three years. So I had a really strong relationship with her coming into this, having her be back in Buffalo is cool. So I, you know, I'm lucky to have her on staff as well. And she's somebody that just knows me really well as a coach. So she understands my tendencies, um, how what I'm thinking, those sorts of things. So she can meet, read me really well. So it's really, they're both very helpful in different ways of um, assisting me and then assisting, you know, our athletes as well and creating those relationships. What does a typical gymnastics, acrobats and tumbling meet look like for you as a coach versus for your players? Yeah. So as a coach, you know, at that point, it's really on our athletes. Um, we can develop and we can get them to this point and we'll talk them through the meet and, you know, meet up with them before every single event, you know, and have some team talks and do what we need to do. But everything has been prepared for them. And that's the most important thing I can do before a meet. Um, during a meet, I just can let them rock out and, you know, be there. And if they need anything, you know, obviously small coaching cues, but, you know, everything's prepared ahead of time. And so as long as I do that, then I'm feeling pretty relaxed. Um, other than our first meet, I'll probably be really nervous um, and more so excited and nervous. Whereas for our athletes, it's definitely, um, they have to be super locked in and super confident in their skill sets that they've been training. So, um, you know, we have, uh, I'm trying to think, I think we have like 16 different heats. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head and I really should, um, you know, where different groups are going to come out on the mat. So them being ready for that, you know, doing different skill sets, we may maybe working with different people throughout the meet, um, being mentally confident and preparing for that. And then, enjoying the meat. Um, the worst thing that you can do is not enjoy a meat and be miserable for two hours, you know, and have a, you know, a not so great attitude because you're not going to be confident. It's not going to be fun. Um, you're going to be questioning yourself constantly and your team really needs you to vibe around you. So um, I think for them, it's really bringing good energy and then bringing a lot of confidence in their skills. What will a home meet look like for Buffalo State? Yeah, so I'm super excited to have our first home meet um, on February 24th. We are competing against Trine University, 
And, you know, it'll be, it'll be our first one. So I can't tell you exactly what it's going to look like other than, you know, our arena is, you know, perfectly set up for acrobatics and tumbling. You know, we have a great arena, sound travels well, all of that sort of stuff. Um, but what's really unique about acrobatics and tumbling is we, you know, have that exciting game day atmosphere. So you're having music running throughout basically the entire meet, unless the athletes are on the mat. Um, you know, our athletes are, you, the skills that they're doing are really impressive. And a lot of times, you know, the crowd gets really involved with that and seeing those skills for maybe the first time ever at Buffalo State, especially, um, I think the crowd is, and our, you know, our Buffalo State community is going to be really impressed by what we have to offer as a team, but also what our sport has to offer to the community, um, because it is so high energy and it's a really unique sport. What are some of the similarities and differences between acrobat and tumbling and gymnastics? Yeah, so in gymnastics, you know, uh, your your scores are your own. Um, they contribute to your team's scores, but you are judged, you know, basically just by yourself. So you have one athlete on the beam, um, you know, one athlete on the floor, one athlete on bars, one athlete on vault. Whereas, you know, for us, we only have three heats throughout the entire meet which are three individual tumbling heats that are solo passes. They are just one person. Everything else is, you know, multiple athletes out on the mat. So it's definitely more of that, you know, team sport in the sense that you are truthfully leaning on your other teammates. Um, you know, there's times where you're literally holding your teammates up on your thighs, um, doing a thigh stand, or you might be holding somebody overhead, one of your tops overhead, you are truly trusting each other in those skill sets. Whereas with gymnastics, you're trusting each other in a different way, and the pressure is put on you in a different way. Um, so I think that's one big difference. And then another big difference is just the skill sets. So you see a lot of like our tumbling skill sets and like our inverted skill sets, um, look like gymnastics and gymnastics type skills but then you see some also some other like you know tosses pyramids acros they have have more of that cheerleading background so maybe it doesn't look exactly like cheerleading but that stunting aspect you know has a lot of similarities to cheer so we're bringing athletes from a cheerleading background and a gymnastics background and meshing the two to make them really high level athletes doing skills you know that they're not doing before coming to college. So I say that's, you know, the skill sets themselves, other than the tumbling that we do, um, are pretty different from gymnastics. Who are some of the teams that you compete against each week? Yeah, so we will compete, you know, a pretty heavy division three schedule. This year we do have some division two meets as well. Um, but we are home against Trine University. We're hosting Azusa Pacific University, which is a founding team for acrobatics and tumbling. Um, they're all the way from California. So that's going to be a very unique experience for, you know, our community to be able to see them. You know, they've been competing for 14, 15 years. So it'll be a great example of what we have to look to in the future. And then we're also hosting Stevenson University, um, another Division three school. Um, and then we will be going to Adrian College, going to Notre Dame College in Ohio, and then we're going to Caldwell University, um, so a Division three, and then two Division two schools. Of course, can you talk about the culture that you've started to build for the program? Yeah, so I think the culture that, you know, we're really building, um, the first thing that we're doing is really just focusing on our teammates. So, um, you know, you can't have a team without teammates and without a lot of people on your team, which is important, but it's how we interact and communicate with each other. Um, and I touched on this earlier, but it's, they're not expected to all be the same person. Um, we have to meet each other in a place where we don't necessarily need to understand each other all the time, but we do need to accept each other. And if you want to be accepted for who you are, you have to give somebody else space and all to like be accepted as well. Um, so you have to accept them and their tendencies as well and learning that stuff and then communicating at that point of, what's, you know, what's not good about, you know, some of the stuff that we're doing or saying, um, you know, hey, I don't like it when you say that, you know, or I don't know if you meant to make me feel this way, but so I felt with that comment and realizing that not everybody has had the same upbringing. So they don't realize, you know, that that might be hurtful to you, but in the same sense too, not being, you know, feeling like attacked and sensitive all the time 
um, having confidence in yourself and who you are and being able, again, to have those conversations is really important. So kind of finding that ground with our teammates and that's part of having a first year team and not having a lot of upperclassmen. I think we have three upperclassmen um, to kind of help me and our staff manage those conversations and those personalities. So it's other than that, it's I think we have 15 freshmen. And, you know, when you come in as a freshman, you don't know, you don't realize a lot of what you realize by the time you're a sophomore. Um, so I think that's the biggest part that we've been focusing on first. And then from there, you know, it's going to be building on the foundation of that. And then how can we progress to continually be better? So not only better for our teammates um, and be, you know, a better person all around, but how can we excel our skills and get, you know, a little bit further than, you know, we maybe thought that we could go and how can we really pull it out of us, especially with the pull, the small roster, um, you know, that's going to be a big piece to our culture is stepping up to the next level whenever we can and being confident and being excited to do that, I think is really important. So that's this year. That's kind of what we're really focusing on. You know, eventually our culture is continuously going to shift into, you know, uh, something different because our roster is always going to be building up to about 35 athletes. Um, so the culture looks different than when you're at 18 athletes. Um, so that's something this year what that we're really focusing on. What does that recruitment process look like for those prospective acrobats and tumbling athletes out there? Yeah, so a lot of, um, you know, cheerleading athletes, gymnastics athletes, power tumbling, acrobatic gymnasts. Um, we even have like diving athletes recruiting. Um, there's, you know, a lot of different opportunities for athletes. We have a really widespread recruiting net. Um, so the biggest thing that recruits can do is fill out our recruiting questionnaire because from there, you know, it gives me a glimpse of exactly how to contact you, you know, what skill sets they have, all of that sort of stuff. And we can get our information out to them as quickly as possible. So that's the easiest way for recruiting, um, you know, but we see a lot of athletes these days with Instagrams that have videos on them of their skill sets. And that's the way they're recruiting. Um, social media has been a big tool. And especially for a sport like ours, where we're still it's not that we're small because now we have about 55 schools that have the sport so we're growing rapidly and we're growing really fast and the opportunities are growing but we're still not you know a club sport at the high school level um we are actually okay I should say, shouldn't say we're not a club sport we are a club sport our club acrobatics and tumbling is growing hugely we weren't about you know six years ago when I started coaching um we are not a high school sport so it's definitely, you know, the knowledge behind the sport at that level isn't really known. And then the opportunities that we can provide, um, you know, with gymnastics, college gymnastics, there's a very limited number of opportunities um, to make that roster, whether, you know, especially at the scholarship level and then even at the walk-on level. And then, you know, with cheerleading, there's not a lot of athletic opportunities within cheer. So a lot of schools don't support it within their athletic department. So, you know, it can be a really confusing, you know, on both ends, really confusing of where to start and where, you know, those opportunities might be. We're with acrobatics and tumbling. We're, NCAA, we're an NCAA sport. We are a sport on every single college campus. We are under the athletic department. You know, there is some scholarship opportunity if you're at division one, division two. And we have a huge roster that we're trying to build and grow. So for me, we'll be recruiting about 12 to 15 every single year from here on out. Um, you know, it'll be, it'll trickle down to 10 eventually, but for the next four years, you know, that's a lot of roster positions to, you know, fill every single year um, with freshmen or transfers, you know, so you're constantly building towards that 35. So I'd say, you know, there's a huge number of opportunities out there for, you know, athletes from all of those backgrounds to be college athletes, not only on our roster, but on rosters across the country. As a head coach, what do you look at in those prospective student athletes when out on the road recruiting them? So obviously, you know, skill is a little piece of it. Um, you know, having a little bit of that skill, whether you're a position player as a base or a top or a phenomenal tumbler coming in as a gymnast, that's great. But I think what I really focus on is their interactions as a person. Um, so seeing how they interact with their teammates, their coaches, their parents, um, you know, if they're sassy with their parents, I know they're probably going to get sassy with me. Uh, so it's really focusing more so on who they are and then what their goals are and what, 
you know, their work ethic looks like. So making sure that, you know, their vision aligns with my vision so that we don't get to this point, you know, after two years where it's not what they expected. So making sure that, you know, we're aligned, that we know, they know exactly what to expect coming in. And then I know, you know, where we can grow together um, and where they can grow on the team. And that doesn't mean they have to be the perfect person because I know not everybody is. Um, I definitely wasn't as an athlete coming in, but do they have the potential to be a really good teammate um, and a really supportive teammate and a, you know, an athlete that's only going to get better, even if it's baby steps? Um, that's definitely what I'm looking for. What does that official visit look like for those prospective student athletes coming to Buffalo State and seeing the facility? Yeah, so, um, you know, at Buffalo State, we actually have great facilities. Um, we have two gyms, so it's really nice. We have an upstairs gym and then our arena, which is downstairs. So as far as practice facility goes, we have a lot of space, even though we're splitting with, you know, different sports. Um, so I definitely like to highlight that. And then, you know, the resources that we've been given as far as equipment, you know, we have a lot of training equipment, whether it's, you know, landing mats, um, an air floor, a belt and harness for tosses. Um, we have a lot of different, you know, resources that the school has luckily given us. Um, so I definitely like to highlight all of that stuff. Um, you know, our strength and conditioning coach, Katie, she does a phenomenal job with our athletes, you know, and the programs that she gives them and us working hand in hand. I definitely like to highlight her space within strength and conditioning and then highlighting the different pieces of campus. Um, you know, especially where you spend your most time is really important to me. Um, so seeing that and kind of seeing if they can see themselves on that campus. But that's definitely what, you know, we're including on an official visit. Um, and then, you know, making sure that especially when they come in from out of town, um, seeing the surrounding community as well. So Buffalo is a very unique place you know we're really close to Niagara Falls that's definitely something that I've tried to set up for them and get them to Niagara Falls but then we're also you know our campus is in a cool area of town so we have Elmwood Avenue lots of different shops diners all of you know arts all of that sort of stuff so it's a really cool spot to live so I like to highlight that as well um after going to camp or going to college somewhere that you know has one stoplight and a gas station that's about it um, it's fun to show everybody, you know, what Buffalo has to offer. As a head coach, what is it like seeing those freshmen put on that first uniform for Buffalo State for the first time and your seniors putting it on for the last time? Yeah, so this year it'll be their first time across the board. Um, and I think that's going to be the most exciting piece is seeing them all, you know, kind of have those jitters and seeing how they react to the pressure of their first meet. I know they have already talked about it a lot, you know, making sure that they come out strong in their first meet and that they feel confident. So that's something, you know, I'm excited to see them, you know, carry with them and continue forward with um, and kind of hanging on to that as we start practices up in the spring um, so that they can feel that going into their first meet. They can feel that confidence and that pride, um, you know, and I think that's going to be the most unique piece is, not only are they, you know, doing it for the first time themselves, but then inspiring them and empowering them in the fact that they're doing it for the first time in school history. Um, you know, nobody else has done this at Buffalo State before them. So making sure that they understand how monumental that is. And, you know, it's not a pressure thing. It's just more so a pride, you know, a pride thing of having, you know, that excitement that you're creating history as you do this. Um, and then I'm sure it'll only get a little bit easier for them as time goes. As a head coach, what is that feeling going to feel like to see those seniors put it on for the last time? Yeah, it'll definitely be, unfortunately, and fortunately, we don't have any seniors this year. So it'll be something that, you know, we still have to build to. Um, but for me, you know, seeing the seniors put it on, I'm excited for them only because I am excited for their futures. I know how much they have ahead of them. Um, and it's really sad your senior day, you know, or you're at the national championship and you have that last meet. It's definitely hard to watch them, you know, make peace with the sport. But it's also really exciting because you know what they have lying ahead of them. What are some of your future plans as the head coach moving forward? 
Yeah. So I think the biggest thing this next, um, or well, in the next couple months is making sure that, you know, every single meet that we're continuously getting a little bit better, um, again, that we're building on that foundation. And then, you know, the biggest piece would probably be recruiting, um, making sure that recruiting class coming in is strong so that next year, you know, we started this year with no athletes having done this sport. Um, none of our athletes had done it. You know, we taught them everything from their cheer and gymnastics background. We met, meshed them together. Next year, we will have 18 athletes that have done this sport. And then it's just teaching our recruiting class. And it's going to be a really unique feeling to have that um, and to see them grow into that upperclassman role. So I think that's my biggest piece. And that's, you know, what I'm really excited to build towards is having a strong recruiting class this year. So that our roster, you know, is near that 25 to 30 and we can have a really strong, you know, season next year as well, only continuing to elevate at the Division Three level so that eventually we can get ourselves to that national championship meet. What advice would you give those incoming freshmen entering their first year of Acrobat Flint Dumbling? Um, don't take it so seriously or don't be so hard on yourself as far as the skills go. Um, we have so many athletes that just, they be, like they beat themselves up over not being able to pick up things as fast as their teammates. And I'd say, you know, unfortunately, was not an athlete that beat myself up a lot. Um, and I did not pick it up fast. It took me a, a whole year to pick up the sport. And then I was really successful after that. And I think it's because I was so patient with myself. So being patient with the sport and the process is really important because it's not something that you have ever done before. And other people are going to pick it up faster. That doesn't mean that it has to set you back. It doesn't mean that you can't be you know, an athlete that you want to be down the road, but the more you focus on that, the less you're going to get out of it. Um, so I think that's my, always my biggest piece of advice. And I preach it to them a lot is being patient with themselves. Let me get you there. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. And once we can do that, then we're going to be successful. What advice would you have those seniors out there that are looking to go into pl competing professionally in acrobats and tumbling on the national level? Yeah, so I think it's, um, you know, unfortunately, we don't have that professional level past, you know, college. So for seniors, um, it's really their last time competing. So going into their senior year, just having a lot of pride in that. Um, you know, when I was a senior, I think one of like the biggest emotions I had was that it felt like the team almost was moving forward without us. And they were, and that's okay. But especially when you found a program, you know, and you're a founding athlete, you are almost envious that they get to keep moving forward. Um, so making sure that, you know, you're enjoying every moment and knowing, you know, everything that you've given to the program is felt. And then past, you know, past college, it's, if you want to stay in the sport, there's so many different ways to stay involved, whether it's as a coach, um, a volunteer coach, if you're somewhere, you know, with a local university that has the sport, um, a judge, you know, we are always looking for officials, especially if they've competed in the sport. There's a lot of different ways to stay involved um, and to stay involved because you're going to miss it no matter what. What advice would you give those players out there that are looking to get into coaching after their playing career? Yeah, so there's always a lot of coaching opportunities and it's being really open and flexible. Um, I think that's the biggest piece of advice that I can give, you know, going into coaching. I moved back home to Nevada after college. And when coach Jackie called me and offered me the position, I was like, yes, okay. I will move to Pennsylvania. I will find, you know, she's like, well, I need you here by August 1st. And it was July 13th. And I was like, all right, I need to buy a car. I have a lot to do, but it's just being willing to be flexible and to take the opportunity that's been given to you. Um, you know, the perfect opportunity isn't always going to come right away. Uh, it takes a lot of time to get there. So if you can just, that first one that comes that it feels, maybe it doesn't always feel right, but it's really exciting, take it and see what happens from there. Um, I'd say just not, not waiting for the perfect moment because there really isn't going to be one. It takes coaches a long time to get to exactly where they want to be. What advice would you have those assistant coaches out there looking to coach on the acrobats and tumbling side? Yeah. Um, so, the, you know, assistant coaches, it's, being an assistant coach is honestly pretty grueling because a lot of times you're not in control of your own schedule. You're not in control 
of, you know, the team's destiny, the team culture, all of that sort of stuff. So being an assistant coach, it's really important that you trust your head coach, that you believe in what your head coach believes in. And then, you know, taking everything that you can so that when you become a head coach and you're confident and you're ready, um, you can show that experience through everything you've learned, but then everything that you also know that you want to do that's different. And that's okay to be different as well. Um, not every coach is going to be the same. So don't expect to be the same as the head coach that you worked for, because it won't work. You got to be yourself. You got to do your own thing. You can take everything you've learned, but you have to be, you know, ready and willing to be your own head coach and not compare yourself to other people. What advice would you have coaches such as yourself that are bringing a new program to a college like Acrobats and Tumbling? I am, you know, there's a lot of pressure that comes with it. You know, the university is counting on you to one recruit. Um, you know, your main job, especially that first year, is to recruit and to get a team on campus, um, whether, you know, However, that looks, you know, not every single athlete is going to come from a direct background um, within the sport. You know, I have some athletes from dance backgrounds and they're transitionally transitioning great. Um, so making sure that you're doing a good job recruiting a strong and diverse background because um, there's a lot of pressure there. And if you can do that, then everything will fall into place. Um, you know, after that, they're really looking to you to set the tone and to know what your team needs to advocate for your team. So don't be afraid to advocate, you know, tell them what you need, tell them what your team needs. Um, but you can't advocate if you don't have a team. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing is recruit and get working hard. And then from there, you know, everything else is going to happen. What advice would you give those future head coaches out there looking to build their own program and build their own legacy? Yeah, I'd say, you know, the biggest thing is dream big and know what your passion is. Um, if you want to be a head coach and you want to be a head coach for a long time and compete at a very high level and coach at a high level, eventually dream really big and go for it, but don't expect it to happen overnight. Um, you know, I think a lot of times it's so easy to see, you know, Baylor University, Acrobatics and Tumbling, they've won how many national championships, you know, Felicia Mulkey and not realizing everything that Felicia Mulkey has done in her career. Um, you know, being an assistant or a head cheerleading coach at Kennesaw State. And then before that, you know, cheering at the junior college level as an athlete, she took a really long time to build herself up to where she is. And that's, you know, a big inspiration for me is knowing that it doesn't happen overnight. So to all those, you know, coaches that, you know, want it to happen overnight, it's not going to, but it can still happen. And so knowing that and being patient and then working through that process. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the Buffalo State Acrobats and Tumbling program? Yep. So we're on Instagram, um, Buffalo State Acro Tom. Um, and then my Instagram, I believe is just Aaliyah Stark with like an underscore um, but it says it right in the bio that I'm the head acrobatics and tumbling coach. So we're typically using Instagram. My team has convinced us to start TikTok. So we'll start up our TikTok account again um, in the spring. We have a couple from the fall. Um, it didn't go very far, but we're going to work on that. Um, and then other than that, that's really all the only places that we're at right now really posting. But our Instagram, you know, we're definitely posting on there and we have a lot of good information about the sport on there. Thank you again, Elise Starr, for your interview and best of luck in your future at Buffalo State as the head coach. Thank you so much. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Coach, for your interview and best of luck in your future. Of course. Thank you so much. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.